Say the summation is something that you might use in a similar setting as the kernel regression uh, for a non-parametric estimator, although it can also be used more generally. The idea with civ estimation is, uh, one idea for civ estimation might be to say, pick d, the dimension of your civ, and then regress yi on a constant, xi, xi squared, xi cubed, and so on, up to xi raised to the power d. So in other words, regress y on a d-dimensional polynomial in x. That's one idea of a sieve. Um, in general, um, or mathematically, the idea is that you choose the function, your estimate of the true function, is the, the function in some function space that minimizes the squared uh, residual. Um, and this function might, for example, be the, the space of twice, twice continuously differentiable functions in R. The problem is, though, that we can't really search over a function space. How do we search over a function space? We know how to search over a parameter space. So the idea is to replace this infeasible sample problem with a feasible sample problem where we search over a d-dimensional function space. For example, the space of polynomials of order at most d. This we know how to search over because that amounts to estimating d coefficients. That's actually exactly what this does, regressing y on, um, on this d-dimensional polynomial. So we know how to solve that. And then the idea with civ estimation is just if you promise that when the sample size d uh, n increases, you're going to increase d as well, such that the space of functions that you're uh, looking for uh, your approximator within, that space needs to uh, get more and more complex and be able to fit more and more complicated uh, functions. Then eventually, if that function gets dense in the full set of all functions there exists, then you're, uh, this is going to work. That's what statisticians have proven. Here's um, the same uh, data generating process as from before. And here's what happens if we, uh, if we try and approximate this with a polynomial, uh, then we get this out. And one of the things you can notice is that uh, we, are act we are very often fitting the very last observation with a polynomial because once we get outside the region of support, a polynomial diverges, goes to minus or plus infinity. So it typically actually goes through the most extreme observations. So those are going to really punish a, a cross-validation criterion. Here's another set of basis functions. So instead of searching over the space of polynomials, uh, polynomials we can ser search over the space of Gaussian polynomials. You can see in the lecture note what that is. And these are polynomials that, uh, that converge to a constant when evaluated outside the region of support. Here's uh, splines, which are piecewise linear functions. These are very powerful uh, approximating functions. And they have this nice property that they're local in the sense that only the observations in this region here, or primarily these observations, are used to fit the spline function, except that the spline function must meet in the, the joining points. Um, but it has less of the, um, uh, the global uh, nature of this polynomial approximator um, where an outlier can affect uh, potentially the fit of the whole thing. Here's a, a spline where the spline is quadratic, so it's piecewise quadratic functions. For example, here you can see really see the piecewise nature of it, and here it really diverges, so this one is, uh, is going to get punished a lot in a cross-validation. If you were to estimate it without this data point and then predict the error there, it would be huge. Choosing the, the sieve dimension, there, there are unfortunately no good rules of thumbs, uh, but we can use cross-validation. Then we just estimate the, the, the model for many different d's, uh, and then we estimate them for all uh, of the observations, including them, excluding those observations one at a time with the jackknife criterion I showed you earlier. Here you can see it looks like any of these dimensions will do uh, all right, but it's, it, it can be pretty jittery. And here are the overfitted and underfitted sieves. So the optimal D is the red one here, 
uh, balancing bias and variance, you can see the, the, the purple one here has too little curvature. It's underfitting the data. And the, the golden one is overfitting the data. It moves around too much. And presumably this outlier or this observation out here is playing a, a big part in that.